Hi there again. It's Psychic Cynthia here again, Spiritual Psychic Cynthia Killian. And I want to welcome you back to our Spirit Guide series, Spirit Guide Attunement series. And in today's video, I want to talk real briefly about uh, a tip for you about how you can really easily get in that state of openness and relaxation to communicate with your guides. It's probably something that you do already all the time and you don't even know it and you may not even realize you're communicating with your guides during this sometimes. So I really am making this video to help make you more conscious of how this might already be happening for you. And if you're more conscious of it, you can maybe get more benefit from it and begin to engage uh, with your guides in this way. So, um, you know, we're talking here about, you know, being relaxed and open so that you can receive the messages from your guides and, and also just communicate with them better. I mean, usually they can hear you when you, you are sending forth your request and, and asking them questions. You know, they don't have problems hearing, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you know, they're, they're very intelligent and, you know, aware. It's those of us in the human world who get mired down in all our, you know, mental processes and overthinking. We're, we are the ones who have the blocks. And actually overcoming your blocks, your own personal blocks, you know, it's a big part about getting better in your guide communication, you know. Your, your communication blocks, and I, I wasn't planning on saying this, so this is one of those little, you know, gemstones I think the guides are channeling through. What they want to say is, if you have communication problems with others, and honestly, I think we all do to some extent, so whatever communication problems you have or blocks or limitations, you know, in your life, whatever communication limitations you have and blocks with others, you're probably going to have some of those same blocks with your guides. Maybe not all, but some. So, um, yeah, that might be a fruit for a video for another time. But think about that and just be really aware. If you are aware of communication blocks you have or biases, be aware of that when you are attempting to communicate with your guides. Okay, but we're going to set that aside for now because I, I want to focus on this just one area. Um, but do know that relaxation is important. And I did another video earlier about that. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, where I talked about relaxation and slowing down your breath and really opening your heart chakra to facilitate this communication. I did say heart, not third eye. Um, it's really important to open the heart chakra if we want to connect with our guides. Um, and the third eye is good. It's good to open that chakra too, but really you want to work with the heart chakra first. So uh, I already taught a little bit on that for you. So check out that earlier video on this channel if you can. Um, but for now, assuming you get the basic concept that you, you need to be relaxed to communicate well with your guides. And unfortunately, that's something in our modern society I think we have to work at a little because for many of us, we don't let ourselves do that enough and, you know, I mean, once you start working on it a little, it will become your second nature. But there, there's so many forces around in society that really are working to make sure we're not relaxed, actually. I mean, you know, there's from because the thing is, entertainment is not the same thing as relaxing, you know, and not the entertainment is not cool. OK, I'm not against that. And I love to have fun, you know, and, and I love to, you know, be together with friends when I can and I dance and. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I also can have fun just sitting in my garden drinking tea. So it depends or having a seance, you know, you will have different ideas of what is fun and entertaining. Um, but generally entertainment, you know, is very stimulating. Right. And, and that's fine. But for this, we need to actually be relaxed. And by relaxed, I do mean, as I explained in the earlier video, open, receptive, soft and gentle inside. You know, you don't want the sharp edges. Uh, and actually, Having entertainment and fun, you know, in moderate amounts can help facilitate an overall state of relaxation. So I think it has a place. I do. Um, but then there's other practices we need. So uh, so for today's video, though, you know, I want you to think about 
when you take a nice, warm, relaxing bath. Do you do that? Now, I know not everybody has bathtubs, you know, in different parts of the world and different parts of the United States. I mean, you know, some places you can only get a really small studio apartment with a shower. Um, but especially if you have a bathtub, okay, and if you ever, you know, have that nice, long, warm soak, think about how relaxed you are in that and how open. And listen, even if you don't have a bathtub or maybe you're not into baths, what about that nice, you know, hot shower after a long day or in the morning after you've been sleeping? I love showers, okay? So, you know, it's like, you know, water. Think about how relaxed you are, however, you know, whether you're showering or, you know, bathing or even, you know, if you do dishes by hand like I do. I don't I haven't owned a dishwasher in many, many years, so and I only owned one for a year or two. I didn't feel I needed that after a while. Um you know, submerging your hands in water and that feeling of relaxation, that warm water. Or maybe in the morning you just take a warm washcloth and, you know, just gently massage it over your face. Actually, just even massaging your face, but when you put that warm washcloth on there, right? So think about these times where we use water to get clean, but also think about how relaxed you are. Uh, and I don't know about you, but some of my most inspired ideas, I mean, real solutions to problems in my life or real inspirations, brilliant breakthroughs have come about when showering or bathing. And, and why is that, you think? It's because you're relaxed, okay? <laughs> you're relaxed. And, and something could be said about the spiritual quality, qualities of water and how it's cleansing. Uh, and so it cleanses away the mental debris. Again, we're talking about the blockages, right? Because mental debris and any energy that you've accumulated you don't need, that is a blockage between you and your guides. So water, you know, getting in water, bathing and showering, or even just, you know, rubbing that nice warm washcloth over your face. Uh, these things also have the added benefit of cleansing and removing excess energy um, and and that's true whether that energy is positive or negative I mean people get into like you gotta cleanse negative energy no you just need to cleanse excess energy anything you don't need uh, anything that is not yours it, it needs to be routinely cleansed and actually your aura has a wonderful way of naturally doing that when you are relaxed and in harmony with your true self you you might need to do some extra cleansing you know a few times a year but uh when you're properly aligned, your aura will take care of that usually. So um, anyway, I digress. The real thing we're focused on here is the relaxation part. The cleansing is an added element though. So practice consciously opening to your guides the next time you feel relaxed in the shower or the bath. You know, and kind of make a plan to think about what issue you want to bring to this. Like if there's something you want to ask them for help with or their wisdom on, something in specific, and then, you know, open up a conversation, you know, or just open to them when you're bathing or showering. And I think that you will be surprised at some of the inspirations that can come through, some of the very clear, coherent messages. Now, it depends on, you know, how you operate personally. We all have a different psychic style. You know, very personal psychic style. So your personal psychic style may be different than mine. Um, I think that most people can get inspiration this way, but it may not come right away. For some of you, it may be that you're, you know, really relaxed in your bathing or even washing your hands in a relaxed way. Uh, hand washing can be very ceremonial. So just, you know, relaxing and really rubbing the hands and Letting the water flow over um, is another way. But connect with your guides while you're doing one of, the, one of these items. Ask them if they have any guidance for you. And really ask them about a specific area of your life that you're wanting more help with. Be honest. We all have those areas. And the guidance may come immediately while you're in that process of washing your hands or bathing or showering. Or it may come later, you know, in other words, it may be that you open the gateway, you know, you say, I mean, being open is just really so important with this. So 
giving permission, and I'll probably do other videos about that, or certainly I'll be teaching in the courses about that. You know, it's one of the fundamental things. You have to give your guides permission to help you. They can't really intervene, and they can't really tell you anything either if you're not open. So maybe in this process, you're just simply giving permission and opening the channel, and then later the messages come. But it, it can help a lot to open to your guides when you're in water. Uh, based on my experience and also what I hear back from clients and students who are communicating with their guides. Alrighty, so that's my sharing for today. Uh, some tips that I wanted to give you for communicating with your guides, for tuning with your spirit guides. Until next time, may all the blessings of your ancestors and your guides be with you and watch over you, and lead you and protect you. Bright blessings.